In the last unit, you guys learned how to name ionic compounds. Now it's time for molecular compounds. Actually, you can use exactly the same naming system, but there is an additional naming system you can use as well. First method that you can use to name molecular substances, substances made entirely out of nonmetals, is by using the stock system. In other words, using Roman numerals to indicate the charge of the less electronegative atom. Now, ionic compounds is all about positive and negative, and there's really no positive and negative here, not at least in the ionic sense. But there is what's called oxidation numbers. In the case of CO, oxygen has a charge of minus 2, which means that carbon would have to have a charge of plus 2. According to the periodic table, carbon can be minus 4, plus 2, or plus 4. Since there's more than one possible positive charge, you have to put a Roman numeral after the carbon. Carbon. 2 oxide. CO2, the oxygen is minus 2. There's two of them for a total of minus 4, which means the carbon's got to be plus 4 to cancel it out. Carbon 4 oxide. And that would be using the stock system to name these molecules. H is hydrogen. Now, if you look at the periodic table, you'll note that hydrogen can either be plus 1 or minus 1. But you only use a Roman numeral if there's more than one positive charge. And hydrogen only has one positive charge, plus 1. So you don't need a Roman numeral. And Cl is chloride. NH3 is usually how we write it, although for the purposes of naming, H3N would be the more appropriate formula. Again, we have hydrogen. And then N would be nitride. Nitride, but I just couldn't do it. NO2, oxygen is minus 2 in charge. There's two of them for a total of minus 4. Nitrogen, therefore, must be plus 4. Nitrogen needs a Roman numeral, because if you take a look on the periodic table, nitrogen has a huge number of charges listed. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5. So I guess you could say nitrogen is seriously in need of being Roman numeralized. What Roman numeral do we use? We just did that. Plus 4. This is nitrogen 4, and oxygen is oxide. Here's some more examples. Nitrogen oxide again. Oh, and wait, here's another nitrogen oxide. Woohoo! Now, they're not going to be named the same thing, obviously, because their formulas are different. And this here is carbon chloride. And we already said that carbon needs a Roman numeral. All right, let's find out what these Roman numerals are. Oxygen is minus 2. 3 times 2 is minus 6. We'll cancel out a minus 6, a plus 6. Nitrogen, 6 oxide. Oxygen is minus 2. 5 of them is minus 10. That means nitrogen has to be plus 10. But wait! There's two nitrogens. Now, if two nitrogens are plus 10, that means the charge of each nitrogen is plus 5, because 5 times 2 is 10. So each nitrogen is plus 5 in charge, nitrogen 5 oxide. Chloride is minus 1. There's four of them, minus 4. That means carbon has to be plus 4, carbon 4 chloride. So that's how you name molecular compounds using the stock system. The second way you can name molecular compounds is using a prefix system. Now, many of you are going to be tempted to try this with ionic compounds. Don't do it, because it's wrong. You can only use this with molecular formulas. Why? Because in ionic compounds, it's just giving you the ratio of metals to nonmetals. In molecular compounds, you're telling you exactly how many atoms of each element there are in the molecule. If there's one atom of it, then you don't even need a prefix, or you can use the prefix mono. 2 would be di, 3 would be tri, 4 would be tetra, 5 would be penta, 6 would be hexa. So, for example, CO could either be called carbon oxide or its more common name, carbon monoxide, because there's only one oxygen bonded to the carbon. On the other hand, here we have carbon, and since there's two oxygens, we call it dioxide. Dioxide, die, die, die. Here we have hydrogen and we have chlorine. There's one of each, hydrogen chloride. I suppose you could also call it hydrogen monochloride. 
But there really wouldn't be a need for that because H and C are the only compound you can form from them. NH3 or H3N, trihydrogen. You'll like it. Nitride. By the way, this molecule also goes by the name of ammonia. But that's not what's called a systematic name. Designed by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, to name all compounds. This is just its nickname, ammonia. NO2, nitrogen dioxide. As opposed to nitrogen trioxide. Here we have two nitrogens, that's dinitrogen. And we have five oxygens. The prefix for five is pent. So it's dinitrogen pentoxide. And finally, CCL4, C is carbon. And then four chlorines, the prefix for four is tetra, tetrachloride. You might be tempted to call CaCl2 calcium dichloride. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Don't do it. Why? Because this is just calcium chloride. When you do ionic compounds, you do not use the prefix system. Only the stock system. If you were to write calcium dichloride for this, oh, it's just not going to be a pretty sight.